Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to talk to you about how to make this cool shredded text effect in Photoshop. I didn't invent this effect obviously, but this effect comes from a poster that I recently made in collaboration with one of my friends, Caroline. I shared this and a few people asked me how I made the effect on the text and given I thought it was pretty simple and like I didn't think anyone would be really interested in that, but I would cover it in a video since it's super quick and easy to do. So for this one, you don't need anything from my shop. There's no free download I'm plugging here or anything like that. The font I'm using is called Dharma. If you have Adobe fonts, uh, it's on there. I'll try to find a couple of similar fonts and put them in the description, but I use Dharma for this one. Just gonna make my background black. So I'm going to write my text. You can write whatever you want. Because this effect is destructive, uh, you can't edit this afterwards. So if you do anything fancy to the text, just duplicate it before you start adding the effect I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to right click and rasterize the duplicated layer, hide the original. And then on the left here where the tools are, I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool, uh, or you can just press M on the keyboard. And literally to get the effect I showed you before, all I did was highlight these thin sections across across the typography. You want it to look random, so don't worry about equal spacing or having them the same size or anything like that. When you're pulling this uh, marquee tool around, if it does this and pulls you all the way off your canvas, you can just let go with the mouse and just press space to pull yourself back. Space and click, it's just a quicker, easier way to do it. So I'll probably cut this bit, I'll probably cut this out uh, and just come back when I've selected everything. So while you're, when you're doing yours, just make sure that there's a good variety in the gaps you're leaving. Uh, and a good variety in like width don't have them all be the same um don't have them be spaced out equally or anything like that it should kind of look random so once you've done that press Control, shift and j on your keyboard and that will create a new layer with your selection on it so i'm just going to rename the new layer shreds so with the new layer selected i'm going to press Control, and i'm just going to select one of these corner anchors and just pull it in a little bit so it starts messing with the perspective of the layer so you'll start instead of seeing like the normal width or pixels or whatever when you're dragging it around by your cursor you'll see an angle rather than uh, a measurement do that on the top left one and then do something similar on the bottom right and then if you want you can mess with the width and height as well then once you've done that select both your layers so don't, not the original text just both of these rasterized layers that you've got uh, you can just click one and then click the other while holding shift and it will select them both right click click convert to smart object once you've done that press control on your keyboard and click over the icon of the layer to select the entire layer with your selection tool. So with everything selected, go to layer at the top, click new fill layer and go to solid color. Doesn't matter what you name it, choose whatever color you want. Hide the smart object you created. That's just in case you wanna go back and save any of that for later. And then on the color fill layer, just click on the mask and then go to filter, pixelate, and then click on crystallize. And you're gonna wanna turn it down as far as it can go. Depending on your document size, you might wanna go a little bit higher than three, but yeah, I'm just gonna go right to the bottom and then you get this sort of edge that starts developing now this will look much nicer if you add textures to it but the final touch you can add after that is again with the layer mask selected for your color fill layer go to image adjustments and threshold and now you can sort of control the thickness of the lines or you can it makes this effect a little bit more malleable so for me again i'm just going to go all the way to the right to make the lines uh, and the cuts in the text as noticeable as possible and then generally the finishing touches that I would usually add to an effect like this uh, is usually a gradient map that's what i've used on here is a gradient map and some like spray paint textures and stuff i'll show you a little bit how about how i textured this i know i'm always promoting like the free downloads and stuff in these videos which i'm trying to not do in every single video but if you go to studio um you'll be able to get some free spray paint textures I, again i'll link those below but for me uh, just adding a spray paint texture or anything else that is mixed media or might look cool with um with this effect basically so yeah that's all i'd really usually do is texture gradient map maybe some imagery in the middle if you were doing what i did on that poster or even just this on its own if you are using this effect on a commission or just something where the project has changed obviously you can delete your color fill layer and you can go back to this uh, and just repeat the steps i mentioned before uh, obviously double click on the smart object if you just wanting to change how shredded the text is so you can mess with the strength and stuff like that here or if you need to go even further back uh, obviously you've duplicated your text layer and you've still got the original here so if you're one of the people who asked me about this effect uh, hopefully this has answered your questions if you enjoyed the video 
or if this is useful for you at all, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe or sign up to my mailing list. I'll have all the links in the description to everything I've mentioned in the video and I'll see you in the next one. So just to add on the end, just in retrospect, um, I'm editing this video now and I remade the YouTube intro just because I thought that the one I was using before was a bit boring. Um, this one feels a little bit extra for a Photoshop tutorial. So I'm going to leave it in this time. Um, but if you think it's, uh, if you think it's a bit much, um, message me or comment or something, uh, because I will just change it back. It feels a little bit too intense for a Photoshop tutorial. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.